stack and tilt. Stacking and tilting your body as you swing rotationally. Compression, pain in the body, way too hard on the body. Two steps to a perfect swing. Way too many steps to swing a golf club. Golf Digest, book of drills. Drills, because the conventional golf swing is so hard, way too complicated. Ben Hogan's Five Fundamentals. Now this is a great golf book, but you know what? I think even the great Ben Hogan could have been better. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're gonna play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. Years ago, I was frustrated because I lost that. I was confused, I was frustrated, and then I met Mo Norman and learned the single plane swing. And so now, I wake up every day and I know I'm gonna hit it well, I know I'm gonna play well, I know I'm gonna have fun. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible wake up every day feeling good that they're gonna go out there and play great because of the single plane swing. So Ben Hogan, this is the modern fundamentals of golf. Now, this is one of the most definitive golf books ever written about golf instruction. Matter of fact, I would doubt that, I would say that almost every single teacher of the game has a copy of this book. This one in particular was, is an older copy from 1957. You can see it's just falling apart. And I've, I've looked at this book a lot in my life. The illustrations are great. And obviously Ben Hogan was one of the greatest ball strikers that's ever played the game. And even Mo Norman discussed that him and Ben Hogan equally were as great or great ball strikers. But here's the thing about this book. I believe there's a lot of great stuff in this book. He describes positions and feelings and how things happen. He talks the feelings of how the legs work and the position of the lower body and how it moves forward. So there's a lot of really incredible stuff if you're willing to sit down and read this book. But I think Ben Hogan could have been better and I'll tell you why. And I'm gonna go through a few of these pages here and discuss some of the things in this book. And, but I'm not just gonna tell you these things. Today I'm gonna show you the science behind how Mo Norman's swing is actually easier and better than Ben Hogan. If you look at Hogan's address position here on page 59, this is where you start to see a few of the things that I think are, that create complication in movement. Now obviously Ben Hogan mastered this, but he built in a rotation. If you look at his address position on page 59, and he even talks about how the right arm is slightly bent, which you're gonna need a bent trail arm in, in his position, he's talking his right arm, but his trail hand position, if you look at it, it's on top of the club. Now if you know anything about Hogan, he always talked about how he had trouble hooking the golf ball. This position will weaken the club. And I want, I want you to keep this in mind. He's taking that trail hand and he's putting it on top of the club. And also on page 59, you see the tilt of his body. He's almost standing straight up and down. So there's a couple things that we're gonna come back to there, but this is where I think he could have been a better ball striker. Now, if you, if you go ahead and look forward on page 78, this is where Hogan starts talking about swing plane. And he refers to the plane of glass now Hogan was onto something here because this is talking about swing plane. Of course, all good players swing the club on plane and Hogan knew that when he hit the ball the best that there was this thing called swing plane. And that's what he starts referring to on page 79. But here's what I like to get to here in this book. You start looking at page 88, 89. He starts talking about how he would hold his arm up and he, he could tell whether he wanted to check people's swing planes. He wanted to check his own swing plane. So you hear you have him talking about this plane of glass, but he talks about how the plane is shifting. It's interesting how he talks about plane shift in the book on page 88, 89, but he still has a problem because he's not starting on the same plane he's impacting. And this is where you, I think Hogan, and I know how Mo simplified this, this is why Hogan could have been better. Now, this is, I like page 91. He starts talking about the inside movement, how the initiation of the hips starts from the inside of the, of the pelvis. So he starts talking about how the trail hip moves. I believe that Mo talked, to, you know, Mo talked to me a lot about this, and I believe Hogan is really onto something here when he talked about pelvis movement. The muscles on the inside of the hips are moving the pelvis. But now, this is where I think it gets fascinating. On page 97, he's talking about a trail arm throw. The same thing I talk about skipping a rock. Here's Hogan talking about the trail arm throw, the, the bending of the arm and the extension of the arm, and that's, that's the same thing I talk about. But here's the thing, 
you look at the next page, 98 and page 99, he's sidearm tossing. And when you sidearm toss, your body has to be in a tilt. Now this is what's fascinating. If you, go, if you fast forward to page 102 here, this is where I think you see where Hogan had the complication in the swing. He talks about supinating the wrist. So you see the, the illustration of the book where he's rotating the lead hand. Now, I'm gonna show you today the science of Mo Norman swing. I'm not just gonna show you what I think went on. I'm gonna show you how this is where Ben Hogan could have simplified his motion and no longer needed to have an over supination of the lead hand because this is, a, this is a function of squaring the face. And remember what I said earlier, Hogan had trouble with hooking the golf ball. So he weakened the hand position. He rotated this right side on top of the club to open the face. And then he had to figure out a way to square it up. This is what you see in this book is Hogan's attempt to build in a rotation into the club face, which overcomplicates the movement. Now, if you look at this picture on 103, it's a very famous picture of Hogan at impact. I love this picture, but I want you to notice something about this picture. Look at the tilt of Ben Hogan's body. And now I want you to go back and look at the address position and you see that he had to tilt quite a bit to go from address to this impact position because tilt is a big part of how Mo simplified this motion. And now finally, on page 106 and 107, here's where you see the sequencing and him getting to that tilted position at impact. We're gonna talk today about how I can show you the science of how Mo Norman simplified his ability to get to impact and we could have simplified Ben Hogan's swing and made him even better. When you look at the cover of my book, The Single Plane Golf Swing, Play Better Golf the Mo Norman Way, you see me reference even what Ben Hogan referenced in his book, Swing Plane. But here you see that I'm starting and impacting on the same plane. This is the common sense thing that I know that if Ben Hogan would have known this, that you can start an impact and how to do it, just like Mo Norman, we could have even simplified Ben Hogan swing. So today, I want to show you the science behind the single plane swing. I didn't put a lot of the science in the book. This is all about, kind of like Hogan's book, feeling and learning the positions. Today, let's go into the science of this. So one of the things that I want to first teach you about is what I believe is missing in Hogan's book that Mo Norman figured out. This was maybe his discovery. That discovery being that the tilt of the body is very important to this equation of swing plane. What I mean by that is, notice when you see Hogan's book, which I referred to earlier, he starts in a very upright position. Now, we're, he's calling this the modern fundamentals. So when you see him set up, he's, his arms are hanging down, his spine is, is very upright, there's a few degrees of tilt, and his hands, and, and here's the thing about it, his trail hand is rotated very much on top of the golf club. So if you look at that, and I need to grab my other club to do this, you see that the, the club is body centered, his spine is tilted upward, his trail hand is placed on top of the golf club. Now, this starting position, right, this starting position is what is, the body tilt is so upright, you're not impacting on the same tilt. So at some point in the motion, so this is where you get into, you've got to take this position and in the motion, you've got to come down, increase the amount of tilt to your body and then rotate an impact and end up. So I'm just going to go from address to impact. You start here and you end up there and you see Hogan ended, ended up in this very tilted position, hands leading. It's a beautiful picture of him at impact, but he's standing, he's starting in a very difficult position to get there from. I want to show you the science of spine tilt. Check this out. The most important moment in any golf swing is that instant the club strikes the ball, impact. This is why the first discovery related to the tilt of your back is so important because the shoulders and arms are anatomically positioned at the top end of the spine. Since the spine movement determines how you move your shoulders, which in turn affect how you move your arms and hands, this series of events where the arms and shoulders and hands move directly affects the movement of the club. Since the shoulders, arms, and hands are directly affected by the position of the spine throughout the swing, I consider the spine the central system of the golf swing from the start of the swing all the way to impact and to the finish. 
Studies show that all great golfers, including Lee Trevino, Jack Nicklaus, and Sam Snead, achieve a 25 degree spine tilted impact. This spine tilt produces the proper hands ahead of the ball, powerful delivery of the club, and proper shaft lean and compression at the moment of contact with the ball. Data shows that the conventional golfer's spine is tilted six degrees from vertical at the beginning of the swing. To achieve the ideal impact position, he must increase and move the tilt of the spine a total of 19 degrees from address to impact. To move the spine this distance to reach impact, his head must move two inches backward and one inch downward away from the target. The upper spine must tilt an additional 14 degrees during the torso rotation of the backswing, and the lower spine must move forward, tilting the spine an additional five degrees in the downswing to achieve the ideal 25 degree tilt at impact. Research shows that Moe's swing is easier. The single plane golfer starts the spine tilted at 20 degrees at address. Because the spine is already tilted 20 degrees to start, the single plane golfer can keep the head still during the rotation of the backswing, and then, through lower body movement and stability, move the lower spine only five degrees forward in the downswing to achieve the ideal 25 degree tilt at impact. The single plane tilt of the spine at address also reduces the movement of the shoulders. Data shows that the conventional golfer's trail shoulder is rotated 15 degrees forward at address, while the single plane golfer's trail shoulder is already turned back at address. This requires the conventional golfer to rotate the shoulder an additional 15 degrees into the backswing. The single plane golfer's shoulders are already turned into the backswing from the beginning. This minimizes the rotation of the shoulder as it moves less from the beginning of the swing to impact. So you saw how spine tilt is a big deal and I wanted to start there with the science of the spine position because it affects arm position. I've said this a hundred times, if you watch the videos on this channel, you see me talk about how everything relates to the other part of the body. For example, if you change spine tilt, you change arm position. If you change foot position, you change leg position. The entire body is a sum of its parts. And it, when you swing a golf club, every part must relate to the other part. That's why this is a, it's a 3D look at the golf swing. So when you talk about the spine position, it changes a lot of things dynamically in movement. You saw how with Mo Norman's swing, he started in a tilt that allowed him to get to the impact tilt with much less movement. Like I said before, we've decreased the amount of movement to get to the exact same position that even Ben Hogan, Mo Norman, and all these great ball strikers get to. So I'm, I'm just simplifying the golf swing for you here. Now let's talk about what this creates because now with the tilt of the body, it takes this trail hand. I want you to do this. You can stand right up and do this if you want to. You can stand there and just go into a little bit of tilt to your body and watch a couple things that happen. This shoulder comes up and this shoulder goes down. Now when I bring this hand up to, hit a, to meet the golf club, notice that the hand is in a rotation. So here's Hogan, there's Mo. He's put it, now both players come in this way. Even Hogan says in his book that he's throwing sidearm, right? But he had to go like this to do it. He had to go back, tilt, and knew that to do it. So he had to create an upward motion and a tilt. That's why you're seeing him talk about these planes. Well, I'm gonna get rid of that. We're gonna swing it on a single plane. Why is that? Because we're tilted. Now, I talk a lot about how the trail hand skipping motion helps this, right? You can create a non-rotational motion of the hand, but it's also improving the lead hand. Let's go take a look at how it's helping the science of the trail hand rotation, then we'll come back and I'll show you how it's helping the lead hand. In the typical golf swing, where the hands hang below the shoulders, the trail hand is rotated up to 45 degrees on top of the club at address. 3D analysis shows that during the swing, the trail hand must rotate up to 45 degrees in the backswing to get the club on plane and then re-rotate up to 45 degrees in the downswing to square the club face at impact. Mo Norman's single plane swing simplifies hand movement. By rotating the trail hand 45 degrees to align the club shaft into the single plane, non-rotational trail hand position, the trail arm rotation is non-existent during the backswing, downswing, and through swing. Eliminating the twisting and turning of the trail hand and forearm reduces the amount the body must sequence this rotation into impact, thus reducing errors and improving impact consistency. Mo described this motion even further, as he differentiated the movement between both arms in the swing. 
Mo emphasized the lead arm as pulling, calling the pulling a horizontal tug. He also described the trail hand as along for the ride. This non-rotational trail hand moving back and down also provides insight into Mo's feeling of a pendulum. So you see how we're simplifying the golf swing. You remember in Ben Hogan's book, he talked about the supination of the lead hand. So one of the things that I think is really important about simplifying the golf swing is eliminating any type of a manipulation of the body. In other words, if you have to learn a manipulation or a correction in the golf swing, it's gonna create room for variability. So Mo figured this out and here's how he did it. Now we talked about the trail hand being in that non-rotational sidearm skipping position. Hogan talked about that too. But now look what happens to the lead arm when you finally get this right with the body tilt. What happens now is with the tilt, notice that the arm already comes up. So when Mo set up to a golf ball, he already had the lead arm higher. The lead arm was in a straight line and it was already in a forward position. That's exactly what Hogan was talking about when he supinated the wrists was he was basically trying to get the shoulder up, extend the arm and rotate the hand to square the face. Well, Mo was already in that position when he started. All Mo had to do was bring the shoulders back into impact and the extension of the hand was already there and the wrist was already square to the target. So you're seeing how the adjustment in the address simplifies your ability to become a great ball striker and get to impact. Now, the next thing that's so important about simplifying the swing is what we call compression of the spine because what's happening here is the lower body. If you start, just like Hogan, if you start like this, right, where you're st uh, stacked straight up and down and you end up like this, what's happening is you're increasing the compression on the spine. Let's go take a look at the science of what's happening to the lower back and the spine. A significant difference measured between the normal golf swing and the single plane swing was how the pelvis moved into the impact sequence of the swing. The pelvis acts as a steering wheel of the swing, controlling the movement of the spine. In the conventional golf swing, the head moves back two inches and down one inch in the backswing. Then the lead leg straightens into the downswing, into impact, causing the pelvis and spine to move up three inches at the transitional to impact phase of the swing. The downward movement of the head and upward movement of the pelvis causes compression, stress, and shear as the pelvis of the conventional golfer rotates into impact. Moe's golf swing is less stressful on the back. The single plane golf swing maintains the spine tilt in the backswing. During the transition and into impact, the lead knee remains flexed into impact. This moves the pelvis downward, approximately one inch into impact, reducing the stress, compression, and shear on the lower spine. The head and spine move equidistant from address to impact, eliminating the compression of the lower spine. This data verifies the conventional upward push of the pelvis into the spine, whereas a single plane swing, the lead knee staying flexed into impact, reduces compression on the lower spine. It would be impossible to discuss the movement of the pelvis without discussing the importance of proper kinematic sequencing of the swing. During the backswing, the arms initiate the torso and pelvis rotation together. The pelvis rotates against the stable trail leg. As the torso rotates and arms continue their movement, as the trail arm folds, hinging the hands to the top. The kinematic sequence begins before the arms reach the top of the swing, where you can see the lead hip moves into the lead knee to stabilize the lower body at the beginning of the sequence. As the lower body stabilizes, the torso follows the hip movement and the arms, as Mo said, set angles as they trail the torso movement and lead the hands. The movement of the hands through impact finalizes the sequence of events. The kinematic sequence is as follows. One, lower body, hips into knee. Two, torso rotation. Three, arm movement. And four, hand action through impact. So you've seen us simplify the golf swing. We even simplified Ben Hogan's swing so far by adjusting the address We've simplified how the hands work. We've simplified how the spine works. We've, we've made it easier to get to impact. And guess what? Because we've done all this stuff with a different address position, non-rotation of the trail hand, less compression of the spine, we've also fixed swing plane. Something that Ben Hogan was very interested in and also understood very well was we have to get the club on plane. Let's talk about swing plane here. Now that we understand swing plane, 
it's really starting and impacting on the same shaft plane where we started. Check out this next video where I discuss how Mo accomplished that and swung the club on a single plane. Because of the pelvis lift of a typical conventional golfer, a conventional golfer must, as they approach impact, also lift the shaft upward to shallow the club path. Data shows the average shaft lift for the conventional golfer to be approximately two to three inches. The single plane swing data shows a level shaft through impact. The level shaft is a result of the ideal spacing and distance from the ball of the single plane golfer, where the conventional golfer, because he starts too close to the ball, must lift the body into impact. The single plane golfer, starting on the impact plane, has the ideal distance from the ball, allowing the club to return to the same plane and eliminating the need for a lifting of the hands into impact. The results are that the spine stays in its original tilt and posture, the shoulders move underneath, and the hands move less through impact, allowing the club to move naturally down the extension of the arm. This motion is similar to skipping a rock, where the arm extends as the rock is released from the hand. Science has shown that Mo Norman's golf swing feelings were actually scientific intuition. With less spine and shoulder movement, less arm rotation, and less stress, the data of the single plane swing clearly shows an easier, more repeatable way to swing. Let's review the science behind Mo's feelings. First, you must tilt the spine correctly at address with the trail hand in a non-rotational position. This address position reduces spine and head movement and rotation of the trail shoulder and eliminates the rotation of the trail hand. Next, you must move the lower body correctly with the proper downward pelvis movement into the lead knee. The ideal movement of the lower body allows for the ideal stabilization of the lower body, reducing stress from the spine. It also promotes the proper hips, torso, arms, hand sequencing of the swing. Finally, by starting on the impact plane, the single plane swing reduces the lifting of the pelvis and shaft, making the swing easier on the body and more consistent by naturally keeping the club moving as an extension of the arm. This natural movement, like skipping a rock, simplifies the movement of the arms past the body, finishing the single plane swing motion and completing Mo's feeling of greatness. So now you've seen the data and the science and the intuition Mo had of an easier way to hit a golf ball. And that's some of the clips I pulled from some two of my productions. If you go to singleplaneacademy.com, you'll find some of the research and some of the videos I've produced that go into more detail about Mo's single plane swing and the science behind it. The video you saw there was from the Laws of Simplicity video and the Mo Norman Clinic series. Both of those videos can be found on singleplaneacademy.com. Thanks for joining me today. And by the way, if you're interested in more of this content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon to make sure you get notified every time we produce a new video to help you play better golf.